How is it going everybody? You're watching Danabal Tech and today is finally the day because I'm gonna give you the new iPad Pro review and finally answering the question, can it replace a computer? And I wanna tell you in advance, yes it can. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay guys, so I'm gonna separate this video in nine categories. So there's a lot to cover, so let's not waste any time. So this iPad is, as I mentioned, the third generation iPad Pro. So it doesn't have a home button. It is the newest one Apple has released. And uh, of course, as you guys can probably tell, it's the 11 inch model. So it's the smallest one. And I'm gonna talk about that later, a little bit later on the video, why I think this is the best iPad Pro and why it's the one you should buy. Another important thing is that I'm not gonna do a head to head comparison between this and a computer. That's not the point. This is an iPad Pro review. Of course, I'm gonna be talking about a computer. I'm gonna be comparing it to a computer because uh, it's one of the questions I wanna answer with this video, but I'm gonna focus on the iPad itself because I believe that's what you guys came to see. So the first category I wanna talk about is practicality and design. And this is one of the biggest selling points of the iPad Pro because uh, if you're buying this, maybe you want this because it is actually a two-in-one device. So as you guys can see, it is a tablet, of course, but you can use it as a computer and that's why it is so important that if you want to do this if you want to replace your computer with this you need to buy uh, the case you need to buy the smart keyboard folio because otherwise you just have a tablet so you actually need to buy the case and you need to buy the Apple pencil at itself so as you guys can see it is in the in the fold is in the fold position the folded position but you can just unfold it and just like uh, shut it like close it uh, and then this is your to go position and you can just take it anywhere but of course this is the main thing you want to do with your iPad Pro which is of course use it as a keyboard so this is the main thing you want to do with your iPad Pro if you want to use it as a computer you actually need to do this because otherwise you're gonna to need to rely on the screen keyboard which is just bad it's just bad to type on glass so like the screen keyboard come on you can't do it and you just can't work with this but with the keyboard with the case you can just have a normal full-size keyboard and you can actually do stuff. You can actually work. You can use it normally as a computer. The pencil is also very handy and of course on the third generation it is magnetic. It is like you can attach to the side of the, of the iPad Pro and then it's charging and paired and then you can just remove it and easily use it and I and I think it is very very useful because it kind of replaces your mouse like uh, you're gonna have your hands right here all the time so having to actually actually reach to actually like swipe and scroll through things and things like that and tapping on apps it is just so much better to do it like that it's just so much easier so I think it is the replacement of uh, a mouse so you actually do need that if you want to see more information on the Apple Pencil and on the Smart Keyboard Folio I have a dedicated video on that go ahead and click on the card right here because uh, I have a full video on that so and of course as I mentioned design and practicality so uh, the, one of the biggest selling points of the iPad Pro is the fact that you can easily do that you can just detach from the case and this case is awesome because it's just magnetic and you can use it as a tablet like this is so so cool you can just like even lose the pencil if you want and just use it as a tablet to browse the web watch videos on YouTube and things like that you can just leave it leave this in the office for example and like take this to your bedroom take this to your home and then you just have a really awesome nice screen this is one of the best things I like about this and this is the biggest reason why I think this is the correct size if you get the 12.9 inch iPad Pro which is it's too big you can't use it as a as a as a tablet you just can't it's too big and then it loses the purpose of the iPad Pro because if it's too big to use as a tablet you're just gonna use it as a computer so why not actually get a MacBook if you're just gonna use it as a computer so that's why I think this is the perfect size device you can use it as a computer as a tablet and it works perfectly on both now we have to briefly talk about iPadOS 13 because a lot of the things I'm going to show you right now are only available because of iPadOS 13, like things on files, things on Safari. iPadOS 13 just completely changed the way you interact with your iPad. You can see by the desktop, dark mode and everything else, you can see that the looks of this is iPadOS 13 and uh, so like this is very, very important. I think iOS, iPadOS 13 just enabled the iPad Pro to become a computer 
replacement. But that's why before that I didn't make the video because I just think it wasn't, now it is. So I wanna start by talking about the Files app, the new Files app in uh, iPadOS 13. As you guys can see, I'm using dark mode, that's why everything is black, but you can switch and everything can be white. It's just uh, a matter of taste, of personal taste. So as you know, Files is your file management uh, application, your app for file management. And of course, here you can see uh, things that are on your iPad or on iCloud Drive, so you can access all the files from iCloud Drive. Here you can have some favorites, which is also handy, always handy, and here you have some tags because you can organize them much, much better. And one thing I love about this new Files app is that now you have this new mode because before you only had like icon view, which is very, very iOS, is like uh, looking at, your, at an iPhone. Uh, this uh, list view as well, I don't like it so much, but now we have the column view, which now it really, really looks like a proper desktop uh, file management app. And let me ex let me show you a little bit about it. So for example, you have here um, a folder, you tap on it, it goes to another column, and then you can see more and more like what's inside that folder and keep going and keep going. So then you have this view, which is much, much better. And also if you tap on a file, uh, like the, the, the last file, for example, or even if you tap it on here, for example, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can actually do a little bit of stuff with it. So we have some information when it was created, when it was modified, the size of it, and a lot of information regarding it. Uh, and of course, uh, you can also like a save, move, and everything else. So it's a full uh, file management app, as I mentioned, and I really think this really, really looks like like Finder on the, on the MacBook. I just think it doesn't lose on any points, so uh, you can definitely, definitely work with that. And with iPadOS 13, we have something that is really, really cool, and that is uh, support to external drives. So for example, I have a thumb drive right here. This is the normal USB type A, so normal USB. So then I obviously have to get that dongle. So then you can just connect it to the dongle, and then uh, connect it to your iPad Pro. And as you guys can see, it is connected right there. And in just two seconds, it is right here. Uh, this flash drive is called New York for some reason. And then you can obviously see what's inside. You can see photos and work with it just like we were working if it was already on my iPad. So same story, we can like save, import, move to another folder. You can save it as a photo to our Photos app or move it to any other location here within the Files app. And then of course you can move around, transfer files and everything like that. That's why I said this is just like Finder. Uh, it doesn't lose on Finder on any point. So there's a major upside to iPadOS 13. Now another awesome thing about iPadOS 13 is that Safari now is a full desktop web browser. So uh, it's not only it's not a mobile web browser anymore or anything like that. It can do absolutely everything that uh, the web browser on your computer can do, including download stuff. I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but the best part is you can actually access any desktop website without limitations whatsoever. So for example, this is the YouTube studio. So this is the page uh, like uh, filmmakers like I do, and like uh, uh, us YouTubers use. Uh, so we can see a lot of information, uh, edit videos and things like that. And this page before was not available. It didn't load on the iPad, it doesn't load on the iPhone, but now with iPad OS it does load. One thing I really like about Safari in iPadOS 13 is that if for some reason you open a website and it doesn't open on the desktop version, you can just tap here on the AA and you can request it. Since it is on the desktop version, you can tap to request the mobile version, the mobile website. But if it was the other way around, you just tap here and it would change to the desktop one. So that's very, very cool. So you can always access the desktop website. Uh, since this is a full web browser, uh, now you can actually use it to work with Google Drive. So uh, if you have docs.google.com, if you're working with documents like spreadsheets and text documents, you can just work perfectly, it just works like, like it should work, like it works on a computer. And of course you can edit stuff as well before you couldn't. So you can just go ahead and edit text and things like that, and you can do pretty much anything that you want. It just works perfectly, everything works fine. And um, and if, you, if you're like me and you don't like Google Drive, you don't like Google Docs, of course, you can go ahead and use uh, Apple iWork. So you can use pages, numbers, and Keynote, and then you can do exactly the same thing. 
sorry so uh if you go through numbers right here uh you you do exactly what you want i think it's more fluid of course because it's more compatible uh with the ipad so you can do everything like that but i have to tell you that spreadsheets are one of the things that computers still do it better than the ipad uh, we have more input options we have touch screen and everything but still uh using a cursor and things like that uh it just feels like with the pencil or with the finger you always have a few more steps uh that than you would on a computer so that's something to keep in mind but you can use it perfectly don't worry you can use it perfectly uh, to work with a spreadsheet or with a text document or with a PowerPoint presentation or something like that okay and since I mentioned since let's go back to Safari real quick and since I mentioned um, we can always make downloads. You can download stuff with Safari now. You can download ev everything from the internet, absolutely anything you would download on a computer, you can download on the iPad because again, this is a full web browser. So if I, if I change my window right here, by the way, if you, don't, if you didn't know this and if you wanna know a lot about multitasking and things like that, I have a specific video about everything there is to know about multitasking in the in iPad OS on any iPad OS so go ahead and click on, on the card above right here you're gonna love this video there are so many tips so um, if I go to for example uh, download iTunes of course it's not gonna work okay I'm not gonna install iTunes which is just a demonstration that I can in fact go ahead and click here it's gonna ask me if I want to download iTunes and I click download and it's already here, as you guys can see, downloading iTunes. So it is actually, is the real deal, it's downloading. We have a full uh, download manager here in Safari. And of course, once that's done, it's gonna go straight to our files app, straight right here to our files app, to the download folder. So as you guys can see, it's going straight to the download folder. I have so many downloads that I have already made. And as soon as that's done, it's gonna go straight here so I can do whatever I want, share it, install it. Of course, I can't install iTunes because as I mentioned, uh, iTunes is not made to be installed on an iPad. Now, I have to talk about software and I'm not talking about OS, the operating system. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. I'm talking about software itself. So applications, uh, the software you use to work on a computer and that you're gonna use here in the iPad. As you guys can see, obviously the iPad works on apps. So all the apps I have right here are the same apps I have on my iPhone that I can go ahead and download from the App Store. So uh, that's the only way to actually install uh, applications, so install software on your iPad right now. And to me, this is the biggest limitation that the iPad Pro has. And let me explain. If you own a computer and if you actually wanna change, you, you wanna replace it with the new iPad Pro, you have to ask you this one question. Uh, what are the things you use your computer for? So for example, if you are an architect, an engineer for example, you have so many different uh, applications, so many different software uh, that only works with a computer. So uh, if you are one of those professionals or many, many others, you're probably not gonna be able to switch to an iPad Pro without having such a big headache. Because uh, if you use like AutoCAD and if you use SketchUp and things like that and other software like that, it's gonna be very, very complicated because you don't have replacements here. So if you wanna make the switch and if you wanna change, you have to think, you have to make a list of everything that you use and see if the iPad Pro has compatible apps or if it can run through the browser. Because as I mentioned, now we have a full browser. But if you don't have apps and if you can't run it through a browser, uh, it will be very complicated for you to make that switch. So this is very, very important. And this is the, the biggest downside of the iPad Pro. You can only rely on apps. You can only use your apps. But at the same time, we have so many good things about it because apps are awesome. We have hundreds of thousands of apps. We are used to using apps on your iPhone and then now we have the possibility to use them right here uh, with our iPad. So just an example, uh, I was using Face app to actually make myself look old, you know, Face app. So it was such, a, it went so viral. So how can you do that on a computer? You just can't because this is just an app. But this is so fun. So for example, I have here, that's me and I, I wanna make myself look old and then I'm old right here. So this is, this is just one of the examples of how cool uh, is to have the ability to install apps right here on your iPad. And most of them are compatible with the iPad, some of them are not, they are iPhone exclusive like this one, but it still works the same way. And even like uh, calling an Uber or something like that, uh, it's just like you have a big iPhone sometimes. Now let's talk about operating system. And I'm just so happy that iPad actually uses uh, iPad OS, so that's a mobile operating system because it is so fast. If you use Mac OS or for example, Windows or something like that, it's never gonna use Windows, but you know what I mean. So uh, if you use 
a proper desktop uh, um, operating system, it just wouldn't be so quick. Have a look at like, everything is so, so fast. Everything is so responsive, so, so good. How, look at how fluid it is. Everything, anything you wanna do on a computer, you can do it faster right here. Now, to show you how fast the operating system with Face ID are, I'm just gonna give you an example. Let's say I have my iPad Pro right here and I have a MacBook or any other laptop right there. And I wanna just open it up, unlock it, and have a look at some emails, which is something we do a lot with those with those devices so i'm just gonna open it up and i'm gonna prop it up as you guys can see it's already unlocked because of face id and then i can go ahead and open my emails and then i'm already here i'm already working for example so like this is just instant like it took me what like 10, five seconds, like six seconds, it's just so, so fast. There's no way any computer can be as fast as this. And that's not because this is like a powerhouse or something like that. It's just because of the way the operating system is built, because of Face ID, and because of how fast everything is. So the iPad Pro is just so quick, it's so fun using it. Now I wanna talk about something important, which is battery life, but still, I don't think there's a lot to cover here because, uh, of course, the iPad Pro battery life is just amazing, but if you compare it with the MacBook, uh, battery life or something it is very very similar generally um, I use it for one day and a half and I have to actually go ahead and recharge it so it's a full day morning afternoon a little bit at night and then the next day um, more or less in the middle of day or middle of the afternoon it's like uh, it, it, it dies the battery dies so for example I charged it yesterday as you guys can see but I charged it at night at 7 p.m. so then I used it this morning yesterday night and everything as you guys can see my usage here um, uh, but uh, it's still in 59%. So the battery is just amazing. I have nothing, nothing to complain here. And as I said, I think it stacks up. Now, I wanna talk about something positive about the iPad Pro, which is, which are the cameras. So as you know, the iPad Pro has two cameras. So it has a, a rear facing camera, and a front facing camera and you just saw how quick it was just to open, it's just blazing fast. So you have uh, the front facing camera, as you guys can see, that's us. Uh, and you have the rear facing camera. This is something that is not is not a huge deal because nobody's gonna go around with the with, with their iPad Pros taking photos. But sometimes it can't be it can be very handy. Like the selfie camera is much better uh, if you compare it with a MacBook FaceTime camera. And uh, the rear camera as well is very good. I use it sometimes to take thumbnails from my YouTube videos if I have some problems, or even post something on the internet, uh, post something on Instagram. Sometimes I want to take a photo of my phone, for example, and then I have it right here and then I take a photo of my phone uh, in order to actually post it on Instagram or post it on YouTube because uh, before, how would I take a photo of my own phone? I couldn't do it with my MacBook, now I can with this. So like cameras are not a huge deal, but uh, this is definitely a positive that you wanna have on your daily driver. And last but not least, I wanna tell you something that I don't like about the iPad Pro and that's because it is not fully independent from a computer. This is something very, very bad. For example, if something goes wrong with your iPad iPad Pro if you need to restore it or if you if you are for example like I am in, in iPad OS 13 and if you want to downgrade if you want to go back to iOS 12 you actually need to plug a cable and plug to your computer so things like that make the iPad Pro not fully independent and I really really hate that so just make it a uh, internet based restore like you can restore from the internet or just plug a thumb drive and then you can do it because now on iPad Pro you can but I believe they will add this in the future but as of right now you still you're still dependent of a computer so I really really hate that so first of all thank you guys for sticking all the way to the end of the video and of course you can replace your computer with an iPad Pro I just showed you all the main important things and uh, of course only if you have some specific applications or software that you use in your computer that you can't use on an iPad Pro that are not available online uh, via the web browser and you just don't have apps that's the only situation I think you shouldn't replace. Of course, I don't, I'm not. I'm not saying like okay, like be responsive or something like that. It is a very expensive device, so please make sure to go ahead and look and, and research and look for everything you need to do. But if like 90% of people you use your computer to browse the web, uh, look at emails, spreadsheets, uh, or even like uh, edit videos, edit images, like like me for example, and many many other things that you can't do in, on an iPad Pro, go ahead and make the switch. If you're thinking about 
about it, go ahead and make the change. You're gonna love it. The iPad Pro is just so much fun. It's so good to go ahead and play with it. It is so much better to do something different instead of your normal trackpad and mouse and, th and keyboard and things like that. It is so, so good. You're not gonna regret it, I guarantee. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you have some like questions, suggestions, if you agree or if you don't agree with me, please make sure to go ahead and hit the comment box below. So uh, let me know what you think. Also, please make sure to go ahead and hit the like button down here, um, the subscribe button with, and press the little bell icon and everything you know. And also have a look at these videos I'm gonna put right here, uh, right by my side, because I'm sure you're gonna love them. So that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys in a couple days. Bye-bye.